In this video, we would talk about the tissue mediators of wound healing. Wound healing is a critical process for tissue repair, essential for homeostasis. Imagine your hand is cut by a sharp object, but eventually it would heal and regrow that tissue. Now, wound healing is a complicated pr procedure. It has stepwise, uh, uh, stepwise progression. There is homeostatic stage. There is inflammation. There is proliferation. And ultimately, there is a remodeling phase. And all of these steps of wound healing is mediated by a set of molecules known as collectively known as the tissue mediators. So first, we would look at these tissue mediators and try to understand their role and then we would go step by step to understand at which step these tissue mediators might be useful. So first of all we would talk about the platelet derived factors. Most importantly the TGF beta and platelet derived growth factor or PDGF. Both of them are really important in context of tissue repair. Both of them help in angiogenesis that means growth of new blood vessels and fibrosis vascular remodeling and smooth muscle migration is also triggered by these factors now there are a bunch of cells such as keratinocytes fibroblast macrophages and mast cells all of them play active role in the tissue uh, in the tissue repair or wound healing process and one of the key factor that is secreted by fibroblast is vegf or <coughs> So uh, basically, it's a growth factor as well, and it stimulates angiogenesis. So multiple cell types like platelet, like fibroblast, all of them secretes growth factors that triggers blood flow to this wounded region and new blood vessels grow around this wounded region. Also, fibroblast growth factor is secreted by the fibroblast as expected. It helps in tissue remodeling in the site of injury. Macrophages are really important towards the end phase of the wound healing because it secretes metalloproteinases which can remodel the extracellular matrix and can alter the dynamics of wound healing. So overall these are the key players or key molecular mediators which regulate the wound healing. So we have to understand the key players are bunch of growth factors like PDGF, VEGF, like FGFs, etc. There are matrix metal proteinases and also TGF beta. TGF beta is a very important uh, molecule in this context. Now let's try to go step by step and understand where these mo molecules or mediators are important. So the step one of the wound healing process is basically homeostasis. In this case, blood vessels which are ruptured now constrict and there would be a platelet plug formation because platelets are adhere to the site of injury and ultimately form the platelet plug that you can see in this picture. Eventually, fibrin mesh would be built around the platelet plug and the blood would be clotted. There would be no new blood flow. But imagine there are some pathogens which has entered the body through that entry route, through that injury site, right? And they have to be taken care of. So the neutrophils are actually the fast responders in that context. They go and try to fight the bacteria, engulf the pathogen, but also they bring into the scene their friends macrophages, but that happens later on. So basically phagocytosis by neutrophil is the first event. Eventually these uh, neutrophils and macrophages which eventually reach the tissue injury site would secrete chemokines and cytokines which would further attract other neutrophils to the nearby area. So overall inflammatory mediators like IL-1, IL-6 would help in this overall process. So overall what we learned phagocytosis and cytokine secretion are the key event in the inflammatory phase and also fibroblast and endothelial cells get activated they secrete now stuff which are important for wound healing so basically the fibroblast and endothelial cells which are activated eventually would secrete factors that we already talked about there are a bunch of growth factors that would be secreted by these cells that would help in the angiogenesis process one of the major factors that help in this angiogenesis process is platelet derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta secreted by the macrophages. So both these can lead to new blood vessel formation. Eventually there would be migration and proliferation of the epithelial cell to cover the wound site. So this is basically known as re-epithelialization. Now we are going to look at the re-epithelialization from the top view. Now what would happen is like there is a scar tissue that can possibly form in that region but now the extracellular matrix has to be reorganized 
and uh, basically that has to be resynthesized or restructured so obviously there are fibroblasts which would play this active role so there are matrix metalloproteinases and tissue inhibitors of matrix metalloproteinases which can overall regulate the uh, ex extracellular matrix turnover just like a brake and a accelerator so uh, activity of these two proteins would be really important in this phase of remodeling and most of these factors are coming from fibroblasts also macrophages macrophages are key uh, cells that would secrete these uh, matrix metalloproteinases Overall, proper ECM remodeling is essential for wound healing and closure of the wound. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.